Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about six mistakes that you can make as a notary public or a loan signing agent that can land you in some serious trouble. Now, you have to remember that as a notary public, we have a big responsibility on our shoulders. We are trusted public servants who have been given the responsibility to make sure that we identify our signers, we administer their oaths, and we make sure that the right person is signing these documents. It is very easy to make these mistakes, but also very easy to avoid them if you are careful and diligent about your job. So let's get started and let me talk about the first mistake. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this channel so that more such content is shown to you. Well, as you might have guessed it, the first mistake is identifying the signers incorrectly. As a new notary public, when you go to identify your signers, you will be presented with their driver's license, their passport or certain ID um, and it is I understand sometimes very awkward to look straight at their eyes uh, when you're new but please please make sure that you don't get so stressed out or so rushed with your job that you don't identify the signers correctly please understand that a signers identity is crucial to making sure that the right person is signing the right document and nobody is going to be taken advantage of and there is no fraudulent activity. An ID needs to be a state issued or a government issued uh, photo ID that is the first form of ID. If a second form of ID is required the Patriot Act form will list um, options that you can choose from. The ID needs to contain three things. One is their name needs to match the name on the signature line. Second is their photo needs to match what they look like. And third is that their signature needs to match the signature that they are um, performing or they are giving you. So make sure that there are three things on any identification card a state issued or government issued ID needs to have a name and a photo and a signature. With the name let me just uh, make a little bit of statement. Sometimes the signers will have uh, a different name listed on their document. For example, if their ID says John Doe Clint and um, the document says John D. Clint and that is okay. But if the document says John Doe Clint but the ID says John D. Clint then that's not okay uh, because this could be some other person with the middle name uh, starting with a D. So make sure um, the easy way that I try to remember is um, that the ID needs to have more of a name than the document, then it's okay. But if the document has more of a name than an ID, then please ask for a second form of ID to verify this. Now, if the signer does not have any form of identification that is unexpired, remember the ID has to be unexpired. If they don't have a form of ID that is unexpired, then you can use a credible witness. Um, which is a person that knows the signer and they have a right form of ID that you can identify by um, and they identify the signers for you and you can fill out the credible witness form for that. Lately there has been a question about gender. Um, if the gender on the ID doesn't match the gender of the person, um, you know certain circumstances where this can happen. Um, I would say that the gender is not one of the identifying factors of the ID. Like I told you before, there are three identifying factors. One is the signature, one is the picture, and one is the name. If those three match, then you have your person. The second really big mistake that many notaries make is not administering the oath. I have a video that tells you the difference between an acknowledgement and a jurat, but Basically, an acknowledgement is where um, a signer is coming in front of you and acknowledging that they signed a certain document. But a jurat is when the person is signing in front of you and they are also under oath. So you have to put them under oath, otherwise this jurat is null and void. I have been to many closings where I start to administer an oath with the signers and they tell me, oh, this is new. <laughs> Nobody's asked us to do this before and I look at them and I'm, I, f I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, but if they were ever to be called to court and um, they say that the notary did not put them under oath, then unfortunately 
the notarization is useless and the notary can get sued for it and they can also lose their commission. So make sure that you understand the difference between an acknowledgement and jurat and I will uh, link the video. The third most common mistake is not signing your name like it is on your commission or on your stamp. So please understand that if you have your full middle name or you know um, a suffix or a prefix that is in your on your commission that you need to sign exactly like that. So if your name is John um, Clint Duane, then you need to sign John Clint Duane. You cannot sign J C D or J C Duane or um, John D. You have to sign exactly like it appears on your commission and on your stamp. And it is allowed to apply for a name change if you have initially I have done that I made that mistake that um, I have my full first name and my full last name and it's just too long to sign so I'm gonna apply for a name change <coughs> and once you get that name change approved then you can go ahead and start signing your um, short form name but until then please make sure you sign your name exactly as it appears on your commission and your stamp the fourth mistake is not making accurate journal entries. Now I understand that there's a lot of confusion about making journal entry. When I was new, I thought that we just make one journal entry for the entire um, loan signing. But as I found out, you are to make a separate journal entry for every single signer, for every single document that you're notarizing. Now in certain states like Texas, it's not required that your signature, the signer sign the, your notary journal, but it is always best practice to just make sure that they do sign it. Because the reason that we keep these records is that someday if somebody asks us to produce these records or if we are called to testify in court that we have accurate records of who we notarized and what we notarized so make sure that you find out the requirements of the notary journal of, of your state and you make sure that you make all those entries i do use a loan signing agent journal which has a list of all the documents that can be notarized during a session and i just make one entry and all i check is acknowledgement and jurat the next mistake is really easy to make so please be careful so during loan signings, there are certain times that certain documents will have teeny tiny, very sneaky little initials that are needed at the bottom. And it's very easy to miss this. So please make sure that you do not miss these. Most of the times these initials are on the bottom of the loan application or the note or the deed and the riders to the deed. The riders to the, to the deed are like the plan unit development rider, the condominium rider, uh, renewal and extension rider. So make sure that every single time that you are looking at your loan documents, you look on the bottom of the pages to make sure you're not required to put in any initials that you're missing. One more thing I'll add to that is some loan packets are going to have documents that are just, they look like printouts of emails or of um, an invoice from the insurance company or like a 1040. I will make sure that if there are documents that are just looking like printouts of some previous documents they have reviewed that are just in the loan packet, I'll make sure that they will put an initial on the bottom of it just in case. Let's just be sure about that. And on the same lines, when there is a 1040, please go ahead and get the signers to sign. Plus, if you see any that have been e-signed before, make sure you get the signers to wet sign it again and put the date of that signing. And the next mistake that I think a lot of signing agents make is not understanding how to charge notary fees. You can get in a lot of trouble and lose your commission if you charge or if you overcharge notary fees please understand your state's notary fees and please do not make a mistake or overcharge people for example the notary fee in texas for acknowledgement is six dollars for the first signature on one document and one dollar for each additional signature i have made a video about this so please go ahead and take a look at it when you do general notary work a lot of new notaries wonder wonder and i used to wonder too when i was new how do notaries make so much money if they can only charge six dollars 
well you are allowed to charge incidentals like a travel fee so if you're a mobile notary and you're traveling 30 minutes or 20 minutes to help somebody out with a couple of documents then you are allowed to charge your travel fee so that is how you uh, put those fees but make sure that in your journal you notate these fees make sure you always note the right notary fee and do not overcharge people okay i said six but i have one more that i just thought of so on the 4506t uh, or c which is uh, the request for the transcripts of the tax returns there is a little box um, that says something like signatory attests uh, right about the signature box this box is most of the times it is checked uh, when the loan packet comes in but if it is not checked please make sure that you get your signers to check this box um, and also there is sometimes a lot of confusion about um, if they are filing a joint tax return does the spouse also sign this um, document um, so initially when i was new i used to get the spouse to fill in uh, the box where it says uh, spouse's information i think it's box number 2a towards the top of the document and then have them sign on the bottom but lately i have stopped doing that because certain escrow officers personally told me that they don't prefer that so only get the signature of the spouse on that document if the spouse's name is already on the document even if they do file a joint tax return most of the time the loan packet will have a separate uh, form if they are both borrowers then they'll have a separate form for the first borrower and a separate form for the second borrower so just make sure you get them to check that box and make sure only the people who are on listed on that document will sign this all right so that's it for today thank you very much for watching this video and thank you so much for all your subscribes and your likes it really helps me out and it helps me bring you more content Please add a comment and let me know if there is any other items that you as a notary has, uh, has experienced um, could be a mistake that notaries can make um, and that could be helpful for other notaries. If I have missed anything, if you have any questions, please write uh, some comments and please do help my channel.